Hi, I'm Kristen with the ALS 411 on handicapped accessibility and hotels. So our kids really wanted to go on a spring break vacation and they wanted our whole family to go, which is a daunting task when you're dealing with ALS and paralysis, but we did it. Success. We drove seven hours to Minneapolis and we stayed at a hotel. Finding a hotel that would work for us was a challenge. I called maybe half a dozen places and asked some basic questions. How wide the bathroom door was, if there would be room underneath a bed for a Hoyer, if there was space to turn a Hoyer, and at the Residence Inn in Bloomington near the Mall of America in Minneapolis, the manager was so kind to take measurements and to send me photos and so I could know going into it that this hotel would work for us. There were many places that would not work. The handicapped accessible rooms do not necessarily have room to navigate a Hoyer into the bathroom or room for a Hoyer under a bed. So that's something that we need to check out ahead of time. Not all hotel beds are created equal. There are many hotel beds that have a platform base on the floor and they don't easily raise up to fit a Hoyer underneath. We have in the past when traveling to an ALS clinic brought blocks and got those to go underneath the platform bed, but honestly it seemed a little precarious. This was much better and the hotel did all the work, got everything ready for us. There was enough room to maneuver a Hoyer in front of the bed and enough room to fit the Hoyer underneath the bed. When we got Todd into the bed the first night, we couldn't get the Hoyer out though because the bed sank down into the carpet, but the hotel was kind enough to provide bed risers and so it lifted it up so there was plenty of room underneath. The Hoyer. Big thank you to the Elsa Minnesota chapter. They were able to provide us a Hoyer and have it delivered to the hotel and the hotel again was kind enough to accept it and store it for us ahead of time and then store it until they could pick it up after our departure. The bathroom door was wide enough to maneuver a Hoyer through and there was room for the Hoyer on either side of the toilet. It's also a straight shot. I've been in accessible rooms that have a curve to get to the toilet. You have to turn a corner and it makes it a lot more challenging. This one worked beautifully. We stayed in a suite, which was very nice. The center had a kitchen living room area and our caregiver was able to sit there at night and then hear Todd who was in one of the bedrooms when he needed to be turned because he requires 24 hour care now. And then the kids and I slept in the other bedroom. The Residence Inn had two handicapped accessible suites available. The one that we were in had a roll-in shower, which we didn't use because we didn't bring a shower chair. We were just there for a few days. It was a challenge to be away from our equipment. We were glad to get home to our overhead lift, but it went as smoothly as we could have hoped. And the kids had a ton of fun. It was really fun to go to the Mall of America because the mall is so handicapped accessible. There's a lot of great food and the amusement park. And as Todd and I were sitting there watching the kids get in line and get on a ride, I just was struck with the sense of normalcy, which was so nice because we were sitting there like all the other parents just waiting. And it was beautiful. The kids had a blast. Now we were there during spring break, so it was a bit of a zoo and the elevators are crowded. If we were to go again, we would probably go at a time when it wasn't so busy. We also went to the aquarium, which the kids loved. It was like driving in rush hour traffic for me with the um, maneuvering the wheelchair in like a wall of people, but overall a great trip. Thank you for watching this episode of the ALS 411. Subscribe to our channel and follow our blog, Neva Story. We'll see you next time.